Hey guys, so in this video, we're going to be talking about zinc and its role as what I believe to be the most essential dietary mineral. So let's dive right in. Hey guys, welcome to Nutrition Library, your trusted resource for an evidence-based approach to supplementation. If you haven't already or you are new to the channel, I would definitely recommend hitting that red subscribe button that's below this video so that you can stay up to date with all of our future content. Thank you so much. So in today's video, we're going to do a super brief overview of what zinc is as a dietary mineral. And then we're going to jump into the five primary health benefits that are associated with dietary zinc intake. And then at the end of this video, we're going to talk about how to take zinc and why it's so important to pay attention to the dosage that's on the back of the bottle that you're taking. So zinc as a molecule in the body is involved in over 300 enzymatic processes that are involved with things like oxidation, gene expression, and cell proliferation and signaling. Now, it's also a very important neuromodulator in the body, which simply means that it helps nerves in the body to actually function and signal properly, which is why when zinc deficiency is present in an individual, one of the most common and initial side effects is cognitive impairment. Now, I will say that it's actually one of the more common deficiencies here in first world countries just behind things like vitamin D and magnesium. Now, when you step outside of the US and other first world countries into third world countries, zinc deficiency is way more prevalent and it's actually estimated by the World Health Organization that 1.4% of deaths of children below the age of five globally is actually from a deficiency or complications from a deficiency of zinc. Now, 1.4% of childhood deaths globally may not sound like it's that big of a deal. However, 1.4% of childhood deaths actually equates to several hundred thousand deaths per year simply because of complications from Zeke deficiency. Now, the reason I say that is in order to paint a proper picture of how important zinc intake is to our overall health as well as why if you aren't consuming foods that are rich in zinc and meeting your dietary needs, why zinc supplementation might be one of the most important supplementations for you. Now, the five health benefits that we're going to be talking about today in this video uh, that are associated with zinc consumption are one, positive effects on mood and cognition, two, improvements in hormone regulation, three, improvements in blood sugar regulation, four, improvements in inflammation and immunity, and then the fifth health benefit we're going to talk about is its benefits to heart health. And so again, the first health benefit that we're going to be talking about today in this video is zinc's effects on mood and cognition. And now again, this actually is one of the primary symptoms that initially arises when zinc deficiency is in play. And that's because zinc has such a major effect on nerve function. Now this study right here actually showed that correcting a zinc deficiency actually decreased depression, decreased aggression, and increased subjective well-being. And this study right here actually showed that uh, correcting zinc deficiency had the ability to improve cognition and reaction time. And in this study right here, there was actually a reduction in anxiety, fatigue, and insomnia. Now, one of the major things that I want to point out here before we move on to discussing how zinc does this, and this is actually cr across the board for most of the health effects that are associated with zinc supplementation, and that's that when you are taking zinc and the health benefits that are associated with supplementing with zinc are only beneficial in the sense that they are correcting a deficiency that might be in play. There are a handful of studies that show that if you are taking zinc while not being in a zinc deficient state, 
that it actually doesn't have a ton of benefit and has marginal to almost no benefit if it's not correcting a deficiency. But with that being said, it is fairly clear that if you are in a zinc deficient state, that supplementing with zinc has a whole host of benefits that are associated with taking it. The first of which obviously being improvements in cognition and mood. And in this study right here, you can actually see that there was also an improvement in stroke recovery rates. And then this study right here also showed a decrease in the symptoms of OCD. Now, when it comes to how zinc is actually doing this in the body and how it's affecting neurons and brain function, there's three primary things that are going on here. And that is one that according to this study right here, zinc has the ability to raise BDNF, which is known as brain derived neurotrophic factor. And this is actually one of the primary uh, neurotrophic factors in the brain that actually causes neuron growth that helps to keep neurons healthy. And then the second way that zinc helps with uh, nerve function and brain function is that it's actually considered a NMDA antagonist, which means it's able to block the hyperactivity of glutamate receptors. And now glutamate is one of your primary excitatory neurotransmitters. Um, and so proper function with the NMDA receptor is key in memory formation and just overall brain function in general. However, when the NMDA receptor gets overstimulated, that can be a bad thing and induce things like anxiety and depression and brain fog and things of that nature. And so when you are deficient in zinc, the NMDA receptor actually has the ability to be overstimulated. And so uh, zinc is able to suppress the overactivity of that uh, specific receptor in order to keep the brain and neurons in a state of good stimulation without being in a state of overstimulation. Now, the third way that zinc is able to improve brain function and cognitive performance as well as mood is by increasing, according to this study, the uptake of serotonin into certain brain regions. Now, serotonin is actually one of your primary kind of calming neurotransmitters and produces a sense of accomplishment and tranquility. And so when you are deficient in specific brain regions in serotonin and serotonin isn't able to get into specific brain regions, um, it can actually cause depression in a lot of individuals, which is why a lot of the current antidepressants that are on the market right now are considered SSRIs or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And so what those do are to increase the levels of serotonin kind of across the board. Now, obviously some of those are a little bit more targeted. However, zinc deficiency apparently according to that study showed the ability to decrease the levels of serotonin in specific brain regions. And then upon correcting that deficiency, serotonin levels then increased in the brain. Now, the second health benefit that's associated with zinc intake is improvements in hormone regulation. Now, this study right here showed a improvement and increase in levels of testosterone, DHT, and fertility. And now zinc seems to be doing this in one of several different ways. And the first way that it seems to be working is that according to this study, a deficiency in zinc actually led to a lessened conversion of cholesterol to sex hormones. And so cholesterol is actually one of the most primary and essential building blocks to all of your sex hormones. And so a deficiency in cholesterol will cause a drop in bodily sex hormone levels. Now zinc also causes an increase in luteinizing hormone, which is a primary hormone that's released from your pituitary gland that gets released in order to activate the synthesis of testosterone in the testicles for males. And in this study right here, there was also an increase in thyroid hormones and free testosterone. And so it does appear that zinc has a very broad effect on the development and production of various sex hormones, including thyroid hormones, which aren't technically sex hormones, but they are very vital hormones to the body. 
but it also causes an increase in things like free testosterone, testosterone, luteinizing hormone, and DHT, which is a metabolite of testosterone, which is actually more potent as an androgen than testosterone itself. Now, in this study right here, there was an increased expression of estrogen receptors by 56%, and a decrease in androgen receptors by 59%. And so by correcting this deficiency, they saw those receptors normalize to some degree, which again is pointing to the fact that zinc not only has a role in regulating the production of hormones, but also the activation and expression of the receptors for those hormones. Now again, it is fairly important to point out here that these are all done, all of these studies were done in individuals that were deficient in zinc. Now these aren't individuals that are in uh, prime health condition, so I wouldn't expect these same results to carry over into healthy individuals. And there actually has been a lot of studies that have shown that individuals that aren't deficient in zinc do not experience these same health benefits. However, if you are an individual who is experiencing negative effects of low hormones, sex hormones, thyroid hormones, and even some of the effects of um, upregulation and downregulation of specific receptors, zinc supplementation is going to be key in helping to normalize these again. Now, the third health benefit that's associated with zinc supplementation and the correction of deficiency is improvements in blood sugar regulation. Now, in this study right here, there was a reduction in blood sugar by 7%. Uh, a reduction in fasting insulin levels by 23% and an increase in insulin sensitivity by 31%. And now this study in particular was done in diabetics. And so it does appear that zinc has a fairly relevant role in individuals that are diabetic. And in this study in particular, and this has actually been replicated in other studies as well, when it comes to the role of zinc supplementation in diabetics, it does not appear that an individual has to be deficient in order to experience benefits from supplementation. Now there are three primary reasons that zinc is able to do this and one is by inhibiting a protein called GSK3 beta which has a negative effect on insulin signaling and so by supplementing with zinc whether you're in a zinc deficient state or not actually has the ability to inhibit this molecule which subsequently increases and improves insulin signaling on specific cells and so when you're able to do this, you're able to get glucose out of the bloodstream and into muscle cells, fat cells, uh, different organ cells, whatever it might be in order to get it out of the bloodstream, which is the major issue with most diabetics. Now, the second way that zinc is able to improve glucose parameters is by activating and improving the signaling of a receptor called the GLUT4 receptor, which is one of the primary receptors on a lot of muscle cells, actually, that enable muscle cells to take in sugar out of the blood. And so when you're able to improve the signaling of this GLUT4 receptor, it actually improves the body's ability to get blood glucose out of the bloodstream. Now, the third way that zinc is able to improve blood glucose parameters is that according to this study and this study, there is an improvement in hunger hormone regulation. And so uh, your two primary, well, I wouldn't say your primary ones necessarily, but uh, two of your major hormones that are involved with hunger and society when it comes to eating are ghrelin and leptin. And so apparently what's going on here is that zinc has the ability ability to stimulate specific receptors that then inhibit hunger hormones, which obviously has a positive effect on individuals to feel fuller after meals, as well as to improve the ability of an individual to feel satiated. Now, the fourth health benefit that's associated with zinc intake is improvements in parameters of inflammation and immunity. Now, zinc's interaction in the body with inflammation and immunity is fairly unique and fairly complicated. A lot of folks don't realize that inflammation and immunity do go hand in hand to some degree. And so, for instance, when you suppress 
the immune system. You're also suppressing inflammatory markers and vice versa. So when you know people talk about increasing or stimulating the immune system, you're also stimulating inflammation. And so those two biochemical pathways in the body are fairly intertwined. And so inflammation a lot of times gets demonized nowadays in the health community. However, inflammation plays a fairly essential role in the physiological process of defeating diseases, improving um, tissue function, and recovering from injuries and exercise. And now I say that to say that when we're looking at some of the effects of zinc here in a handful of different studies, it's not so easy to just look at it and say, oh, it improves inflammation or decreases inflammation or increases immunity. It's just not that simple. However, it does seem that zinc has a fairly crucial role in improving the function of the immune system and inflammatory system. And what it appears like it's doing is that it's simply normalizing the function of the immune system and the inflammatory pathways. Now, in this study right here, there was a reduction in symptoms of psoriasis. This study right here showed a reduction in the symptoms of viral warts. This study right here showed a reduction in the rate of sickness. And then this study right here showed a reduction in the rate of sickness and the severity in sickness in several disease states from anything from the common cold to HIV. Now, the interesting thing here is that things like psoriasis are inflammatory diseases, whereas things like obviously colds, viruses, HIV, um, and immune responses to different severities of sickness involve the immunity. And so zinc doesn't appear to have a black and white effect on the immune and inflammation system. And this has actually been shown in a handful of studies. For instance, in this study right here, zinc intake was associated with a reduction in C-reactive protein and interleukin-6, which are both inflammatory and immune system markers. However, in this study right here, there was an increase in TNF-alpha, and in this study, there was an increase in interleukin-2. And in this study, there was a normalization and a trend to increase in T-cell count. And so again, it is fairly clear that zinc has a stimulatory and suppressatory effect on the immune system and inflammation pathways. And honestly, if I had to guess, zinc's role here is probably very, very case dependent. And will just simply depend on whether or not your body is in need of an inflammatory response or an immune response. Now, the fifth health benefit that's associated with zinc supplementation and zinc intake is benefits to heart health. Now, this study right here suggests that zinc supplementation has the ability to lower both LDL cholesterol and total cholesterol. And in this study right here, there was also a reduction in cell adhesion factors, which reduced arterial plaque buildup. Now, how zinc does this isn't fully understood yet. However, we do know that zinc has an essential role in the enzymatic pathway of superoxide dismutase, which is one of your primary antioxidants in the body. And so by increasing levels of superoxide dismutase in the body is going to have not just a cardioprotective effect, but also a oxidative effect on multiple organ systems within the body. And so with all of the different enzymatic pathways of over 300 enzymatic pathways that zinc is involved with in the body, it's abundantly clear that zinc plays an absolute essential role in optimizing health, which is why zinc supplementation is something that I recommend almost everyone consider simply because a lot of the places that you would typically consume zinc through a lot of the different plant foods that typically contain zinc just don't have the levels of zinc that they used to because a lot of the produce that we consume nowadays is being grown 
in mineral deficient and mineral depleted soil. And so again, a low dose zinc supplementation is something that I think everyone should consider. Now, when it comes to supplementing with zinc, there's one primary thing you want to keep in mind here, and that is that you're going to be wanting to stay in between 5 to 15 milligrams of elemental zinc. And now the huge thing here to keep in mind is that when you're looking on the back of a zinc supplement, almost every manufacturer that I'm aware of currently doesn't list the elemental zinc content in their product. They list the overall content of their compound that they're using. And so for instance, I take a zinc gluconate tablet once per day and zinc gluconate is roughly 25% elemental zinc. And so most of the zinc supplements that are on the market currently contain a zinc molecule molecule that is attached to things like proteins. And so what you have to understand is a large portion of what you are consuming and what's listed on the back of that label is actually a protein molecule within that. And so 25% of that is actually zinc. And so what you want to do in order to dose properly is to divide whatever the total listed ingredients are on the back of that label by one fourth in order to determine how much zinc is in it. Now, I typically do recommend that you stay on the lower end of the supplement spectrum simply because overtaking zinc and taking too much of it on a daily basis can cause deficiencies in other minerals in your diet like magnesium and calcium and iron and more specifically copper simply because zinc and copper use a very similar transporter in the body in order to stay active. And so if you're consuming too much zinc on a daily basis, it can actually lead to a copper deficiency. And so I highly recommend that you stick to the lower end of that five to 15 milligram dosage range simply to avoid deficiencies in other minerals. But other than that, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit more heavy on the research today, but if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I do my best to read all of those comments and respond to every single one of them. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to this video and to this channel to stay up to date with all of our future content. And I will see you next time.